Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Every day we're bombarded with ads and messages that promise to somehow make us better. We're told we can lose weight, gain muscle, prevent hair loss, or heal faster. The proposed solutions, pills, tonics, vitamins, and herbs are not only hyped to humans, we also use them on our animals. But do they really work? Well, today we're going to examine some of the science behind many of the supplements that are used on horses and get some insight on how effective or not various supplements can be. Joining me is e e equine specialist from UVM Extension, Betsy Green. And Betsy, you've also brought along a guest. Yes, I brought along Dr. Carrie Williams from Rutgers, and she's somebody I've worked with for years through e-extension and through our equine environmental research projects, and that's why we brought her up here to Vermont. And I thought I'd let her stop in and talk about some of the interesting questions I get on horse supplements. Mm -hmm. Well, I know as, as a horse owner, I get catalogs constantly in the mail with everything from powders and pills and and tubes and <laughs> everything that anything could possibly go wrong with your horse, there's a, there's a cure. Yeah, and does it work? That's always the first question. Is there research backing that or is it something that somebody says, I saw a difference? Is it illegal? All these kinds of things are questions, especially if you're doing, you know, for the health of your horse, first of all, but also if you're doing showing or things, you could actually get disqualified if you're giving something that may or may not work, but test positive. So it's really important to know what you're putting into your horse. So Carrie, do I need to provide supplements for my horse and how do I know if they need supplements and what, what should you do? That is a good question to start with mm -hmm. because a, a lot of people aren't sure when is the right time. And really supplements are used for preventing a problem from happening or um, helping balance the diet if the diet may be a little bit unbalanced, meaning um, your uh, forage and your grain alone aren't actually adequate in the diet, so you need to add in something or cover all your bases there. Um, also, horses that aren't quite normal, and I know a lot of people <laughs> laugh when I say a, a normal thing? horse. I know. I'd like to meet one. <laughs> <laughs> me too, believe me. Um, but if your horse might have some problems that can be helped by various supplements, which we'll talk about mm -hmm. um, as we go through the program, um, those are some reasons why you might want to actually provide a supplement. Is, what is the most commonly supplemented to horses? Um, well, we actually uh, did a study with some eventers and found that they uh, supplement uh, joint supplements um, probably far more than um, any supplement on the market, mm -hmm. whether or not they have a problem. Um, and that's the thing, we're not really oh, sure really? if joint supplements can prevent problems, um, but they're used, even people with two-year-olds seem to use the joint supplements to help prevent that problem. Um, but that's the thing, the research hasn't really shown if it is a problem or not. It's almost like a, a good luck charm. Yeah, yeah. And you, you can see on the, the slide, there's so many different ingredients from uh, chondroitin sulfate to glucosamine, hyaluronic acid, MSM. Um, they're all already parts of our body and our constituents in our body. Um, it's just the problem is they're needed in such high quantities um, that really the, the therapeutic doses need to be very high. So we always recommend to people read the labels on the supplements before you buy them because if you buy a cheap supplement it might not have the levels that are effective in our horses so it's not going to work and you're this, just wasting your money. This is kind of like the drinks that have the added supplement but it's at so small a level that it's yeah you might feel better because you think you're supplementing yourself but it's not at any kind of level that would actually be useful or active. Mm -hmm. now you talk about joint supplements um, how can you tell if your horse needs a joint supplement, I mean, if you're not already doing that already. 
Um, typically, uh, the joint supplements there do help make an unsound horse sound. Mm -hmm. So if your horse has a history of arthritic pro arthritic problems, um, the vets diagnosed it with arthritis, um, you might want to try a supplement. You will see the difference. Mm -hmm. um, if it's working, you will see that the horse is more comfortable as it lays down or gets back up, as you're out on a trail ride, as you're working them, um, and whether you do dressage or Western pleasure or whatever it is, you'll start to f notice that they warm up quicker, um, they're a little more looser. Um, so if, if you don't see a difference in the horses, I wouldn't say waste your, um, don't waste your money on the supplements. Mm -hmm. You should actually see a difference in your horse with these supplements. We talk about electrolytes too. Is that just for horses that are working hard? Is it for heat? Um, that is the number two, actually, most <laughs> common supplement, so I'm glad you asked that. Um, the misnomer here is that just because it's summer, my horse needs an electrolyte supplement. Well, my question to the owner then is, um, is your horse sweating? every day in the summer. Mm -hmm. If it is, then yeah, maybe you do need an electrolyte supplement. Horses only lose the electrolytes like sodium, chloride, potassium, um, phosphorus, when they are sweating. So if your horse isn't sweating, then they don't need that supplement. They're not stressing. Um, and they're not stressing enough. They're not losing it in the sweat because that's when they actually lose the electrolyte supplements. Um, the other thing too is, again, read the labels on the supplements. <laughs> because if sugar is that number one ingredient, all it does is taste good. It's not doing anything for the horses. That number one ingredient needs to be sodium chloride. It needs to be salt so in order for it. it. But yeah, well, yeah go ahead. Taste it. Actually, <laughs> it should taste like salt. What about, um, but isn't the whole point to get the horse to drink more water? So if, if, if it tastes better, won't they theoretically drink more water? Um, and that, that is if you're putting the electrolyte in the water. Mm -hmm. um, there's different ways to supplement it. You can put it on top of the feed, which I actually think is better because some horses won't drink funny water. Right. So you really need to train them to drink that particular water. So I would rather put it on the feed because most horses eat won't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll eat anything. Um, and that way they're, they're definitely getting it and you leave the water alone mm -hmm. and, and then they will drink the more water that way. Okay, let's also talk about antioxidants because that's a big thing. Uh, that, those are my favorite. That was my, my PhD work was all in antioxidants. Um, there's so many of them. Like you can see on the, on the slide, vitamin E and vitamin C are the most common. But the good thing is they're all found in pasture grasses. Mm -hmm. So really, unless your horse is at the highest levels of exercise, really working intensely, um, if they're out on pasture, they really don't need an antioxidant supplement. And what they're there for in the animal's body and in our bodies is to protect our cells and our tissues from oxidation. Mm -hmm. People wonder, well, what's oxidation in our body? I know rust and browning of an apple are all <laughs> you know, oxidation, right. but that doesn't happen in our bodies. I don't think so, but <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, but if you saw on, on the side previously, that little schematic uh, down in the bottom, if we could go back to that, um, the free radicals are actually tearing apart cells and molecules and those little orange dots are these free radicals that need to bind with something and need to react with something. They will destroy our cells unless that antioxidant can come in there and bind with that molecule and make it a stable molecule. So that's why in everyday uh, life it's good to have at least a little bit of antioxidants in the diet mm -hmm. and then if you're exercising at the highest levels um, they should have even more. What about hay though? If, if a horse is only on hay, medium quality hay, might they need an antioxidant? That's a good question too. Uh, since most of our antioxidants are vitamins, um, the sun, when we make hay and we dry the hay, actually will denature the vitamins. Mm -hmm. So while they are in high levels in pasture grasses, once you dry it and make hay, the levels decrease exponentially. So yes, at the very high levels um, of exercise, they probably still would need an antioxidant supplement even if the hay quality is good. And what about in the wintertime though, when there isn't the grass and you're still feeding just the hay? Is that something you have to watch out for? Probably, um, especially when there is no pasture and there's snow on the ground, which I, I know there is up here for uh, quite a good portion of the year. And then there's mud. Um, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yes, if they are still training um, and they're still exercising, I would consider giving them uh, an antioxidant supplement or even just a multivitamin supplement would work. And just a quick uh, note about grass. Can a horse get too much grass? 
Um, well, if they're getting too fat on the grass, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, because some of the grasses can be really high in sugars, and if they're consuming too much grass, uh, it can lead to obesity. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, it can be a problem in some horses. Or, or if you're giving it to them too fast, introducing them in the spring, you have to do it gradually and get them used to it so that they don't have colic or laminitis. Yeah, any, any major change in diet is yes. not good. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Same with introducing any of these supplements. It should be done gradually. Can you tell just by looking at your horse that, that it needs a supplement? Um, a lot of times people say, oh, my horse just doesn't look good. It, its coat is dull, its condition, it's just lacking a little luster. Um, in that case, fat supplements are, are great. Mm -hmm. You can add a little bit of oil to the diet, a little bit of rice bran. Anything with fat to it is just going to give that little bit of sheen uh, to the coats. Um, so, you know, yeah, you can tell looking at them that way. Muscle builders are another common uh, type of supplement. Um, if they just need a little bit more roundness to their muscles, granted, you also have to be exercising them. The <laughs> muscle builder is not going right. to magically put muscle on the horses, but it can, when used in combination with exercise, um, be beneficial. Let's talk a little bit about herbal supplements, because that's a big thing now. Yes. <laughs> that is a very big thing. Um, and I think the problem with some of the uh, herbal supplements is just because they're a natural product doesn't mean that they're safe for the horses. There's very little work done on any of these supplements to know if they're, um, if they're efficacious. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also no regulation done on any of these. So it's really up to the buyer of the supplement, consult with your vet, while some herbal supplements have a drug-like interaction, they also interact with other drugs. So if your horse is on some medications, it's really important to consult with a veterinarian. Work with them, make sure that what you're giving them is not have a negative consequence with other things that they're on. Let's talk about some of the supplements, some calming aids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually that's, it's a good follow-up from the uh, herbal supplements because valerian root is a very big calming uh, supplement. It is it does have a very large sedative effect, and because of that, many show organizations have actually put that on the banned substance list. Oh, no kidding, yeah. Yeah, so some horses can get disqualified from competition if they are on a calming aid that contains valerian root. But there are a lot of other things they could use, uh, B vitamins like thymine, uh, tryptophan. We all know tryptophan after <laughs> Thanksgiving, yeah. how quiet and calm it makes us and sleepy. Um, and magnesium are some other things that might be um, efficacious uh, in some cases. Now, there are also supplements for the horse's hooves as well. There are a lot of those out there as well, yes. Mm -hmm. um, things like uh, biotin, zinc, iodine, methionine, if they're used in therapeutic quantities, so again, similar to the joint supplements, they need to be in the supplement in fairly high amounts, um, could potentially work. And that is if the hoof problems stem from a nutritional deficiency to begin with. So if consult it's environmental, your vet. Yeah, if it's environmental, it's not going to work unless you change the environment. So it may help some poor feet. It might not help others. It kind of depends on what the root of the problem is. Okay, let's talk about ulcers, too, because that's a problem with a lot of horses. That's a really big problem with a lot of competitive horses. Mm -hmm. um, the only true way to cure ulcers and get rid of ulcers is to do the pharmaceutical option with omeprazole. Um, its generic name is uh, Ulcer Guard, mm -hmm. might be one that people have heard of. Um, it's there to prevent and to cure the ulcers. There's some other, since that's a very expensive route, there's some other cheaper ways that might mask the problem, like uh, antacids. Uh, there's another herbal supplement, a uh, sea buckthorn uh, extract, which actually has been proven to decrease the uh, severity of them. It still won't cure them. Vegetable oils, papaya juice are some <laughs> of the things that have been used. And they might work in some cases, but again, they're just going to mask the problem. They're not going to cure it. And once again, consult with your veterinarian. Absolutely. All right, let's talk a little bit about some of the recommendations, Betsy, for the average animal owner when they're considering supplements. <laughs> oh, you said it right there. Consult with your vet, first of all, but also consult with your nutritionist because a lot of the supplements we were just talking about are nutrition-based or mm -hmm. trying to fix nutritional issues. And so if you have something going on, and of course you'd have to test your hay, test your pasture to know what you're feeding and work with your nutritionist to balance, to see if your horse's diet is balanced, first of all, then you can look from there saying, okay, what am I missing? as opposed to let's just try and add on these things. Because some of these supplements, given in quantity, can be toxic. I mean, you think vitamin A can help, but it can also be toxic at high, too high a level. 
Mm -hmm. And so those types of things you really need to be concerned about. And if you say, okay, well, what? It, but it's just a natural herb. Well, arsenic and cyanide are probably organic and natural, but <laughs> that doesn't mean they're good for your horse. <laughs> so right. be, be very aware of what you're putting into your horse's body. And so, Carrie, how can people get in touch with you? Um, I am more than happy to answer any emails. Um, my email is uh, up on the screen. Um, just tell me you saw the program on Across the Fence and I'd be happy to help them out. Mm -hmm. And any parting advice for folks um, who are heading into fall season, horses on the road, <laughs> be careful. <laughs> yeah, horses on the road, be careful with horses on the road, but also be careful with that fall growth. We usually get a bigger uh, uh, kind of stimulating in the pastures and a lot of times that can have a lot of horses start colicking when they have that fall growth. So be aware of that. That'd be mm -hmm. one thing I'd say, right? All right. Well, I want to thank you both for joining me today. Thank you. Thanks. That's our program. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.